previously on Eden. Oh, there she is! Oh, she's so cute! Maid! Yes! Because we need it more! Like her, the way she can balance between being utterly serious and just like a bubbly maid or whatever reminds me so much of Holo. What kind of bull crap is this? I wanted to see party! I wanted to have that kirk. S sleepyhead? You mean she sleeps? Oh my god! Oh, so I am to be the enforcer! <laughs> Ooh, yeah. I'm moving eyes. Well, I don't think they could really move a lot. I mean, the pupil takes up 90% of the entire eye. A monster. I'm a monster! <laughs> that way I can orgasm to such things without having it be awkward. It was a sandwich! A man's best friend. Egg, ham, lettuce with cucumber, and sa salmon! <laughs> There is no more need to have any other sandwiches in this world. See? Like I said, she's trying to make friends. She's trying to make friends. I thought of many ways I could destroy mankind. Why didn't you do it? It would have been fun. And our story continues. Hey, 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 everybody out there. In YouTube land, Jake, the one-man band, is back again playing some more Eden. And I suddenly stopped to look out the window. Because there was a tree, or I don't know, something. The clouds were clearing, revealing a serene blue sky extending all the way to the horizon. Because that's normally where the sky goes. Staring at it for a while made my eyes hurt slightly. It's because you're staring at that sun. Very dangerous. Could go blind. The light was a little much for my eyes, having been it exhausted from the night shift. Plus, your eyes probably haven't adjusted to the brightness yet. Elika, you're okay! Hooray! I mean, I wasn't worried or anything. <laughs> Not at all. I wasn't worried. Uh, what's the matter, Rio? The maid girl whispered with concern. My shift ended the same as usual. After ha handling thing... Handing? But I was still handling things, so... After handing things over to my relief, I said goodbye to Lobby and ran into Elika on the way back to my room. Oh. Well, it's, it's nothing in particular, just staring at the sun, having my weekly staring competition with the great star of our solar system. It always wins, though. Really? If you're not feeling well, would you like me to uh, have a look at you? <laughs> oh, you would like to look at me, wouldn't you? Give me a full physical, wouldn't you? Yeah, she would. <laughs> I should be asking you that. Are you all right? Would you like me to give you a physical? Yes, since I played hooky. What? What do you mean by that? I had a hard time telling how much of what Elika said was true, but at least her complexion looked fine. Yeah, because, I mean, she's saying, oh yeah, I yeah, played hooky, but she still collapsed. So, are you, is it a half truth? Is it the whole truth? But seriously, Ryo, aren't you acting a bit strange? I just stayed up all night, I'm freaking tired. Someone asked me whether I believed the world would be destroyed a little while ago. A person of faith. Ugh. And what's with the look? Sorry, I have a bad habit of telling jokes without reading the situation. That's, that's quite alright. It's quite alright. It's okay. I will forgive you for this. Ilika said wholeheartedly as she let out a deep sigh. That seems to be the case. Yes, I suppose that joke is very much, is not very amusing in modern day, due to the fact that the world is, in fact, you know, ending. So, what did you say, Ryo? What was it again? I guess I said something along the lines of, it doesn't feel very real? That is a reason. That is reasonable. No one, uh, one cannot cast aside their doubts until the very moment of destruction, while as everything visibly falls apart at the seams. 
I mean, yeah, there ain't no, like, earthquakes, there ain't no fire and brimstone, volcanoes aren't spewing lava, there isn't red in the sky, and the rivers don't run red with blood. So, everything looks pretty normal. And they say the world is ending? Uh, I need a little bit more convincing. She spoke in a clear tone. I almost never heard from her. That goes for everyone. Not just you. Does it go for you as well? Do you believe it, Elika? Do you? Uh, to tell the truth, I was forced to believe it. Due to the fact that your best friend slash sister slash proprietor... You, you, you know what I'm talking about. <laughs> Shion, you know. Forced to believe it, yeah, because she's in league with Shion. I too was once a scientist a long time ago. But, you know, not the best, because that's Shion's job. So you were. That makes sense. I sometimes forget, given her usual dress and personality, but she was unmistakably a Felix. It was only natural she had uh, participated in the Earth evacuation project in some form. Mostly the maid form, but that doesn't truly matter. I was not what you would call a high caliber, though. She shrugged her shoulders and gave a bitter smile. As a phalanx, El Elika's intelligence was far above that of humans. It would only be appropriate at that at one point she would have worked on the colony ships. But she wasn't the smartest one in class, she was the dum-dum. <laughs> no, since she had been born a phalanx, she was obligated to use those abilities of hers to save humanity. She is saving humanity by prancing around in a maid outfit. Why isn't he understanding this? There were many who did not believe the world was ending when the Earth Evacuation Project first started. We collected data on how certain the destruction of Earth was and explained it in detail so the bureaucrats could prepare a budget. I think in this, if you could, if you could convince bureaucrats that the world was ending, I'm pretty sure that they would give you infinite budget. But the real catch of that is you would have to convince bureaucrats to convince them that the world is ending. You can, you can't convince a bureaucrat of anything. That's the one thing I learned from government class. And from watching the news. Uh, that must have been tough. No kidding. Yeah, bureaucrats, they don't listen to anything. Elika pouted. But since I am cute and oh so oozing with kindness, the bigwigs would likely not be too tough on me. At least that is what I was told before they unleashed the full blunt of their uh, committees. Although I was only told the truth, I was removed from the project for that reason. It was quite tro troublesome. You were removed from the project because you were unable to convince bu bureaucrats of something? That seems kind of one-sided. <laughs> like I said before, you can't convince bureaucrats of stuff. Was she trying to brag or was she bitter? I think a little of both. As I was pondering, Elika sighed deeply. Well, it was also true that my work was not particularly astound uh, astounding, so I was put into negotiating roles more often than research. I got sort of fed up. So you dropped out? Since Shion was here, I specialized in develop and I specialized in developing engines, but Shion was capable of doing everything herself. Yeah, the, the freaking smart people doing that. The truth is that the other Felixes, the ordinary scientists, and I were unnecessary. Because we just had one smarty. So forget all the other smarties. Elika seemed bitterly, smiled bitterly once more. In her 100 years of life, I was, I was sure she was, she must have gone through things I couldn't even begin to imagine. Wasn't that from... Wasn't that for the best? Making tea without a care in the world suits you better. You're much better at it. 
I cannot help but wonder as to whether that should make me happy or if I'm being patronized. I only spoke the truth. That's pretty much all I ever do, since I don't have much of a personality. Hmm. As she was deep in thought, I placed my hand on her shoulder. Bad touch! Exceeding personal space when touching the shoulder. Okay then, I'll get going. You were doing the laundry, right? Uh oh, yes! Wait, <laughs> while I'm at it, would you like me to do your laundry as well? Well, technically I'm wearing my only pair of pants and dress, so... Unless I'm gonna prance around here naked, I would say no. No, I'm alright. Doing my own laundry comes natural to me. When I joined the army, I became uh, frighteningly capable of handling my everyday uh, necessities before even honing my combat skills. Well, that's good. You know how to take care of yourself before you know how to take lives. But one of my humble wishes is to wash men's clothes and get the taste of what it is like to be a newlywed wife. That's actually quite cute. That is quite, quite cute. You want to wash men's clothes so you can feel like you're a, a wife. Get a taste of some other guy? What? Are you eating the clothes? Maybe? Hmm. <laughs> Get a taste of some el someone else's clothes. Obviously, you like me in some way, shape, and form. But I'm gonna deny you that, since I'm the horrible, horrible monster that I am in this story. She knitted her brows and glared at me. It was a, an expression that I hadn't seen much of until a few days ago. I suspected that Elika felt we had grown a little closer ever since I returned to the radio. She was pretty friendly with me from the start, so it might have just been my imagination. Honestly, you can be so dense sometimes, Ryu. Never mind. Good day to you. So here's the real question, you guys. Who's the true denser one? Is it Rio from Eden, or would it be uh, Hishio from Katawa Shoujo? Who is the true dense one? I'll leave that up to you. Comment down below, please. She seemed to be in quite a bad mood as she walked off. Well, duh! Man, you should have let her wash your clothes. Helica. Hmm? Yes? Ne nonetheless, she stopped when I called her. Uh, it's nothing. Sorry for calling out to you. Of course! You don't share your feelings! Girls like to be talked to! You certainly are a strange one, Rio. Yeah. I guess I was pretty strange. If it was bugging me that I should have just asked her about it, why couldn't I just get the words out? Oh, are we going back to a flashback about his sister? I had asked about uh, Natsumi. I had to ask about Natsumi, about my sister. How did they know each other? How? Oh. My shift was over, and... I should have gone back to my room to rest. So why was I here, in the lounge? Phew. I took a drink of the black tea, made by a private I had become acquainted with. Private, I am a warrant officer. You shall make my tea from now on. It was nothing compared to Elika's, but it wasn't undrinkable. It was coming up, uh, on the month since it had it was coming up on a month since I had been first stationed here. According to Xion, the facility will soon be shut down, but such a directive had yet been issued. These tendous tenuously slow days were still trudging along with nothing happening whatsoever. Oh if it isn't warrant officer Harno what you up to? Nothing. Drinking tea? Sitting in the lounge alone? 
being the loner. What's up with you? I should ask you that. I looked hard at her face, at the face of my partner, whom I had been, who had been with on a night shift while, just a little while ago. Why aren't you resting, my good lady? Well, I couldn't really sleep. Oh, why is that? Lavi pulled out a chair within reach and sat down in a unexpected, refined fashion. You know, lately? What? What's been going on lately? You and Miss Elica seem quite close. I tell you, there's nothing going on because I am the blandest person in this place. There could nothing possibly go. Nothing could be possibly be going on between us. Not really. Elika gets along with everyone, doesn't she? Not like she gets along with you. She obviously wants you to do the sex thing. Maybe. Or maybe just the kiss thing. Maybe I'm just going straight to the gutter. Even though she was admired by everyone, she had never fallen for anyone. That was what Shion has said. She always looks so happy when she's talking to you. I can tell that much. So now you're stalking me! Well, if that's the case, uh, what are you trying to say? You playing matchmaker or something? You haven't noticed? Miss Elika has been looking a bit anxious lately. I won't let it... I won't let you say you haven't. You look like you're spacing out. But I know you're always keeping a watch on your surroundings. Even now. I think of that as a bad habit, personally. Observing everything. Being so observant. Seeing the flaws and things. That's a bad thing. It's actually a good thing. I was one who had wandered through battlefields unsure of whether I would live or die, and fought to outmaneuver enemies who would employ any means to kill me. I was always honing my senses so that I wouldn't overlook the slightest change in a situation. I honestly can't tell what it is. I have my guesses, but I'm not completely certain what Miss Elika is anxious about. Well, if I were to guess, she's actually coming to the end of her life, too, just like Shion. And um, she probably wants to at least do something before she dies. But her insecurity may be something that would vanish with some brief words from you. So you want us to share words. We share words almost like every single day, but mostly it's just pleasantries and stuff along the lines of she wants to do my laundry or she's gonna make me a sandwich. What are you be what are you being so touchy for? It wasn't that I didn't understand what she was saying. I just didn't know why Lavi was so concerned about Elika. Because girls are concerned for one another and uh you should be concerned about your fellow human beings. Even though she is a super smart phalanx thing, she's still a human being. Rather, it looked like she was irritated about something else and wasn't venting at me. The signs of thick-headed men irritate me. I don't care for that. I don't care for it either! I'm probably, but I'm probably just as thick-headed as the next guy, but at least I see a thing when it is actually there. If I'm observing somebody else, if it's me, I'm, I'm, I don't, I don't, I'm stupid. You're, they're watching us. The other people in the room were starting to focus on us. Probably because we're the only two talking. I suppose it was only natural. Lavi was one of the few female soldiers here, and setting aside her personality, there seemed to be a lot of men with their eyes on such a good-looking woman. I mean, I won't deny... That is, that is pretty cool. That's, that's a pretty fine woman right there. The mood's ruined. Yeah. Guys, why don't you leave? <laughs> Guys, make like a tree and get out of here. <laughs> Shall we go somewhere else? So, how's about you and me? Go back to my place and let's just see what science is out from there. <laughs> Lombi stood up without waiting for my answer. My drowsiness had completely disappeared. Alrighty, let's go. Let's go do a thing. Oh yes, we're at the shooting range. Very nice. 
No one will ever think about coming here. Nobody wants to hone their skills. Nobody wants to work. As usual, there was nobody to be found at the shooting range. It was virtually uninhabited except during scheduled practices. We were a we were facility guards who really got the chance to see combat, so practice was essential all the more. What are you thinking about? Perhaps we should start a training uh, regiment, uh, serving alongside troops who are so out of practice worries me. Don't bother. Only a fool would needlessly rile everyone up. Uh, get this. Only a fool would needless, needlessly rile everyone up, get the superiors and their subordinates fuming. I'm pretty sure there was supposed to be like a comma there somewhere, but, you know, whatever. <laughs> Besides, I bet you would survive if the entire rest of the unit got an annihilated. The other's abilities don't really matter. Only you and me. It's you and me, Lobby, forever and ever. Only the two of us would make it out of here alive. I'd like to increase my likelihood of survival. You want to increase your likelihood of survival? Make make one of the useless privates a meat shield. Besides, no matter what happens, wouldn't you survive too? I wonder. Lobby gent gently laughed and shrugged. Honestly speaking, I couldn't begin to measure Lavi's abilities. Her every action seemed no left no opening, but there was net but that was natural for anyone with a little training. So I couldn't discern how skilled she truly was. Then why don't you go into like the training room floor, like with the wrestling mat, and do some hand-to-hand -hand combat, see who comes out alive. You know? I've known about you before you transferred here. We're, we've actually met and talked before. Oh, so we have a history! Weren't we going to talk about Elika or something? Why are we going into this now? That's the first I've heard of this. It was five or six years ago, I think. Do you remember Operation uh, Intercept at Old Tokyo? Now that you mention it, there was something like that. After the conflict with the enemy landing unit at the bay, we cleaned up the remaining enemy forces and were advancing inland. If memory serves, my unit took heavy casualties. Oh, that's right! I think I got separated from my unit and couldn't make contact, so I wandered around alone for a while. You know, because I couldn't think of anything better to do. You remember well. And how about meeting me, who was wandering the battlefield alone, just like you? Two wandering hearts meeting each other on the battlefield, and the question is asked, can love bloom on the battlefield? Not at all. Nope, don't remember a pretty soldier girl walking around all alone. Don't remember that. Ryo, you suck. Hey now. Lobby's fist was shaking. It appears that I have incurred her wrath. She can kill you, bro. She's got the samurai sword somewhere. Meaning a girl your age on the battlefield isn't something that happens every day. How could you forget that? I was just stating this. Ryo, you're an idiot. You're putting emphasis on being a girl, but you were still a soldier, right? I didn't put much thought in whether someone was man or woman on the battlefield. I don't care how highly trained you are or whatever, I'm pretty sure you would at least ha have some sort of reaction whether it was a man or a woman. You would get some sort of different reaction from either one. When I assessed others, it was, it had been in terms of me not skipping lines. It had been in terms of how competent or incompetent they were and if they were competent, which field they excelled at. That was about the extent of what I kept on my mind. Anyway, I was mobilized with you, though it was only for about three days. You spent three days with a girl alone and somehow you don't remember it at all? That... I have not... <laughs> that's more time than I've spent alone with a girl, ever. Wow. 
I don't remember. You really forgot, huh? Did you forget what Private Haruna said to me back then too? Of course. I don't remember. Hmm. Ryo, you're such an unlikable asshole. Why are you doing this to me? You know, I would love it if she just like punched us. Just in this situation. It's hilarious how when I play these visual novels, I end up loving the other characters in the story and not us. Because we're always the bland, dense idiot. Or maybe I've just been playing the wrong <laughs> visual novels or something. I could just have heard the blood vessels bulging in her temples. Of course, that was just my imagination. You? You were a sniper back then. And a damn good one at that. So much so that you looked like a bit of a monster to me. Oh, no. You haven't seen a monster. No. No, you haven't. Now that she mentioned it, I vaguely remember something like that. As I moved through the collapsed city of Old Tokyo alone, I searched for what few enemy troops lurked in the rubble and dealt with them. With my bullets, of course. They weren't very adept and couldn't tell where the shots came from, so it was simple to take them out one at a time as they scrambled amidst the confusion. Uh... There was really nothing else to do. It was a time killer, and so was I. Bloops! Ha <laughs> ha! So I did it. Again. And again. Just killing things. I'm not good with guns. My eyes aren't that great. Then why aren't you wearing glasses? That would like... That would like increase your cuteness level by I think maybe 10%. Uh, wouldn't that mean you were useless on the, that battlefield? No. You can pretty much, you can still use a shotgun pretty well. Yes, I was. You told me to watch and learn, but it wasn't helpful at all. Sorry for being useless, you asshole. I said that? That sounded like me, but I don't remember ever saying that. Well, never mind that. You were kind of scary, killing enemy soldiers calmly and accurately without moving an eyebrow, but... I tried asking you something. What exactly? What were you trying to ask me? She took a short breath. I asked why you were fighting. Because I'm a soldier and it's what I do. I seem to recall being asked something similar recently. And your answer never changed. You said it plain as day. For someone important. But who is that someone? Who would be so important to invoke some guy? To completely throw away any humanity he had? Plus any personality he had? To just go out into a war and kill people? What or who would cause such a thing? Now I understood. Had I been achieving my original objective? If my determination was shaken, if I were to stand still, I must have been crushed under the weight of my sins I had accumulated. I couldn't afford to be crushed as long as I hadn't yet reached my goal. We were pretty friendly with each other towards the end. We were assigned to separate units, but you were on my mind for a while. Wow, how about that? I have a secret admirer that I completely forgot about. Oh wait, you don't, uh, don't misunderstand. I'm not saying I, I lied to you or anything. No, we just had a connection for three days. Actually, I liked you, I liked you just a little, but... <laughs> but this is, this is no manga. No, 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 this is a visual novel. It's completely different. You see, we read from left to right in this. It's not like I had an undying crush on you the last few years. No, that wouldn't be freaking stupid. You're self-destructing pretty casually, aren't you, Lavi? I think Lavi was waiting for me to suddenly remember our uh, uh, purported meeting from back then. 
Her frustration seemed to be overflowing since I have little recollection of the event, no matter how much she uh, pressed the issue. Oh, jeez! This conversation is not going the way I had planned! I wanted to, I wanted this conversation to be so... to lead to something! I hadn't done anything wrong, so why was I being yelled at? Technically, you did something wrong because you didn't remember this girl when you met, and that's a bad on the girl's part. It, dude, you're arguing with girl logic, and you're not supposed to argue with that. It's like a black hole that just envelops everything. Hey, who is that? Who is it's that's so important to you, Warrant Officer Haruna? Do you not look at Miss Elika because you have that person on your mind? It's of no revelant, er, uh, uh, revelance to you. Oh, of course it's relevant. We're partners, you see. I'm your partner, now and back then. We slept in foxholes together. We've guarded a scientist together. We should tell everything to each other. Just because we're partners doesn't mean we need to know every last little thing about each other. I don't know things about you either. That's far more. I don't uh, know. There, there's far more I don't know than two. Oh! Oh! Oh, things have escalated. That's because you don't try to learn them. I have a gun, you have a knife. Hmm. I would put my money on the knife, honestly, in such close quarters combat. I didn't bleak once, and I didn't take my eyes off her. In spite of that, no sooner had her hand moved, did she manage to draw her knife. So what's the big idea? We're just going to sit here forever? You have quite the reaction speed, just as I expected. Lavi had without a doubt moved first, but I hadn't even... I hadn't been able to follow her movements. But even so... I had pulled my handgun and pointed it out before she could prepare her knife. Now that I think about it, he has more reach. And her reach isn't all that much, so... But then again, she would have to get in close to damage him with the knife. I, I, my money's still on the knife. Move before you think. Shoot before you're shot. It's the same for you, right? It's not guns or knives that mustn't be directed at the wrong person, but rather the desire to kill, don't you think? That's about right. I'll ask you one more time, what are you trying to do all this, all of a sudden? I'm sick of how unruffled you look. You just, you're so damn calm! Those are some scary eyes, Lavi. If you had made those eyes when I had met you on the battlefield, there, then there is no way I would have forgotten. That's an honor to be told that by a soldier I used to admire to be. Yes, I wanted to be just like you. A killer. A monster. My, eye, my arms are slim. I lack upper body strength. I kept being treated as a hindrance on the battlefield. But you were the very soldier I thought I wanted to become. Ryo Haruna, because I met you, because I found a goal, I became strong. Because of you. If you're strong, it's because you took the time to train and learn to survive in the field. Dude, why can't you take a compliment when it's obviously being thrown at you? The way she drew and handled her knife just now was magnificent. I couldn't find any flaws in her stance. However, don't mistake who was uh, pointing your, who you're pointing your blade at. No, perhaps you weren't ever meant to hold a weapon. What do you mean? I'm saying you're softer than I am. Well, d well, she's a girl. Girls are genuinely softer. I lowered my gun and put it away in its holster. Are you going to kill me now? 
If you don't follow through with the kill, you'll be countered. You should know that much. You can't play the role as a cold-blooded killer unless it's in the line of duty, can you? Well, I'm not quite a machine. I haven't been honored to that degree yet. Lobby dropped the knife. Her sharp eyes still glared at me. So is this going to become a regular thing where whenever we meet in private, we're going to end up pointing our weapons at each other and then not kill each other? What's what's with this? What's with this on off relationship we have with Lobby that centers around weapons and death? I think you're fine like that. I fight for the one important to me. I've killed many and done even more unspeakable things. I've become so stained with blood I can no longer see her. Elika has said she knew my sister. But that was why I couldn't ask about her. Yeah, sure, logic. I, yeah, 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 whatever, yeah. Yeah, I want to know about my sister, but the one person who knows about her, no, I'm not going to ask. It had been seven years since she had been taken away. I couldn't let her see how much I had changed. I couldn't let her see what monstrosity I have become. I couldn't. No! So, with that, my dear friends, we shall end the episode here. Yes, things bounce back and forth in this one. But, we still need to find out how the story will end, and why things are the way they are. So be sure to like and favorite if you've enjoyed, subscribe, of course, if you feel inclined to, and I'll see you guys next time I'm out there in YouTube land. Be a good person, tip your waitresses, keep moving forward, I'll see you next time. Yeah!